In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about heat engines and the Carnot cycle. This is something a lot of people have asked me to do. Um, it's a topic that people find quite difficult. So first, let's think about what a heat engine is. Now, in a previous video, I talked about um, a system's internal energy and how, well, what we could do is we could say the change in internal energy is equal to heat minus work. So this is heat that comes into the system and this is work done by the system. And heat and work are all about changes in energy. Heat is a change of energy that happens without a force and work is a change of energy that happens with a force. Now, as engineers, what we're really interested in is, is finding a way of, of, of doing a force. You can imagine like a steam engine, the whole point of it is to move a steam train. Like it's, we want a force to push it forwards. And so what a heat engine is, is a process to convert heat to useful work. And we can draw that as a schematic diagram, which I'm going to draw here. In fact, I can get rid of this um, for now. So a heat engine, a device that convert convert heat to work. And it works like this. So we have a hot reservoir and a cold reservoir. I'm just going to put cold. And in the middle we have our our engine. And we get some kind of some heat energy is absorbed by the engine Q1. And that is converted to useful work W. And there is some wasted energy Q2, which is absorbed or discarded into the cold reservoir. And then we'll have some kind of process to get our system back to where it started. Okay, so that this is telling us here as we get back here. So what we can say is, knowing that energy is conserved in this system our useful work w is going to be q1 so the energy absorbed by the system minus the energy discarded so everything else left is the useful work and then this just as a kind of slight aside this allows us to define like an efficiency so how efficient is it so we say that's mu is the useful work divided by the work, the energy, heat energy we put in to try and achieve this work. It's kind of like the percentage of, of what we put in that's useful. Like you can think our Q1 is how much energy we need to put into the system and our W is how much useful we got out. And then doing some like clever substitution and rearranging, you end up getting it's one minus Q2 over Q1. So I mean, that's a slight aside, but something you should know about. The important thing here is, is to understand what the engine is is that we start with a hot reservoir that from that hot reservoir we put some heat energy into our engine we get some useful work out but then we lose some energy to heat as well which goes to the cold reservoir you can imagine that this engine is kind of our piston so we talked about a piston last time so you can think about this being our engine and we have q1 going in um, our useful work done will be pushed on the piston and then we'll have to there'll be some kind of waste heat um, out and then we need to do something to get the system back to the start so for, for an engine to be useful it needs to be like a cycle you need to it needs to work more than once so in a cyclic process we kind of get back to where we started and we can think about how we draw that on a pressure volume diagram so that's what I'm going to do on, draw now. So I'm going to be drawing a specific type of heat engine, which is called um, the Carnot cycle. So I'm going to write that down. So it's a C, I think, Carnot cycle. Now the Carnot cycle is like a theoretically, it's a theoretical thing. It's the most efficient heat engine we could possibly hope to get. It's all based on, on theory. It's not something we can actually make. 
and this is a kind of a process you need to be aware of and understand so basically the the Carnot cycle there are four processes and two of them are isotherms so I'm going to draw two isotherms first so remember from previous videos that on this PV diagram if we have a curve that looks something like this it's an isothermal process it's a process that happens at the same temperature so if we start here and go here along this we would call that an isothermal process so we can say that this is an isotherm at a certain temperature T H so I'm going to draw the whole process here first and then I'll explain each specific bit so this is actually it might be better if I just go through this step by step so this is where we start we start here at A and then we have an isothermal expansion to B so we're increasing the volume now something we need to remember is that from Amerton's law pressure is proportional to temperature and in this case the pressure is decreasing and if the pressure is decreasing that means the temperature will want to decrease as well because pressure is proportional to temperature and the only way we can stop that is if our system absorbs some heat energy to make the temperature stay at th that's what an isothermal process is that's why with an isothermal process we either absorb or emit heat energy to make sure that we account for this this law so from a to b we're actually we're getting our q1 our heat energy is coming in and also because we are expanding our volume is increasing you can imagine in this piston the volume is increasing we are doing work this is our useful work is being done in this process now the next stage is an adiabatic expansion which looks something like this okay from B to C now I've drawn this dotted line here and this is another isotherm at T cold so we've got two isotherms so this adiabatic expansion gets us from this hot isotherm to the cold isotherm and what happens here is that the gas expands and the system does work but the temperature is dropping there's no heat exchange that's what adiabatic means that our, our, our Q is zero so our Q, this this here would be our Q1 is happening and then here we're just changing temperature to get to point C so from A to B we're having an expansion so we're doing work so that this entire from A to B you could shade integrate under this curve and you'd get the work done but for this to be a cyclic process we need to get back to A so we can do it again so we end up having an isothermal compression up here so from C to D now here it's isothermal and the volumes decreasing oh sorry the pressure is increasing because we're going up I know I've drawn this kind of a bit shallow but you can see the pressure has increased here and if the pressure increases the temperature is going to want to increase but we don't want it to so the system needs to give out heat and that's this q2 here so in this process we get we're losing our heat now we need to get back to a so then we have another adiabatic process that comes up here so it's an adiabatic compression remember adiabatic the heat is zero that gets us back to the start which means we can go again and that's why this is a cyclic process so from A to B that's our, our Q1 is coming in to the system and from C to D our Q2 is leaving and then our work done is happening as we expand from A, A B to C you can see the volumes increasing you can imagine this piston the volumes increasing and we do it with uh, that's a force over a distance so we're doing work so from A B and C A to C that's where our W our work done is being, being is happening now because 
of the way that we can work out work done is the area under the graph. What you can show is, is that if we look at the work, the useful work done, when we're moving from a low volume to a high volume, that's the entire area under here. And coming back, we're having to do work on the system. We're having to compress it back in so it can go again. You can imagine like a piston, you know that a piston or a, um, uh, you can imagine like in an engine, um, in the, you've got like uh, pistons moving up and down. So this is the piston moving back in and decreasing the volume. And so this is work we're having do, to do to kind of put the engine back at the start. So this isn't useful, this isn't work we're using. So the area under this bit is not used for work. So we need to take that away from that other value. And you end up getting that the area in this shape is our W, is our useful work done in reality. When we take into account the fact we're gonna have to do some work to get back to this A. So that's that's kind of the basics of, of engines. So this, this could be any shape, right? This is a, because the Carnot cycle was a particular example that's got two isothermal expansion or two isothermal processes and two adiabatic processes. But you, you know, there are other cycles you could draw um, that would behave in different ways. But you, the thing to remember is always the area gives you the work done by the engine. Um, so go through this slowly. I think watch this video a few times. There's also lots of other good videos on YouTube on this topic. Um, but as always, let me know what other things you'd like me to do. And good luck with your revision.